Thank you, Maureen. Bonjour, et laissez-moi d'ajouter un, un mot de bienvenue. Je suis très reconnaissant que vous avez pris le temps, ce que je connais, sont des vies très occupées, à se joindre à, à nous aujourd'hui. Good morning, all, and let me add my welcome to this seventh CEO Forum. As Maureen has mentioned, every year the Foundation brings together a large group of chief executives and senior officials in the health sector from across the country within the context of a fellowship program that is a nationwide, fully bilingual, the only one fellowship program to build capacity for improvement within our delivery system in Canada. Uh, the program is really uh, focusing on a range of improvements with teams of fellows, and we're delighted that all of the fellows are here and a number of their chief executives. The themes this year, as Maureen mentioned, uh, pick up actually where we left off last year. Last year, Thomas Lee from Harvard gave the closing commentary with passion and eloquence, saying if we really wanted to make a difference uh, in our delivery system and build a, a stronger patient-based focus and achieve the triple aim, we needed to be serious about listening to the voices of uh, patients and their families in, in the organization of our services. But we also face serious challenges in this province, in all provinces in Canada, with the cost pressures that we're all uh, facing. Provincial and territorial governments across the country are cash-strapped, and if they're not cash-strapped, they behave as if they're cash-strapped, uh, and looking at ways to try to build a more efficient care and to try to bend the cost curve, so to speak. Um, so this idea of bending the cost curve, improving the patient experience, and improving the health of the populations, that is the common objective now of all delivery systems. So uh, why are we focusing a little bit more on the efficiency question? Well, in 2004, we theoretically got a fix for a generation from the first ministers. Uh, it certainly riveted our focus in particular on waiting times, and we, we, uh, uh, we've done modestly better on waiting times, but as a country, uh, we still are among the worst with respect to access. We have major challenges with access to specialty care, and you're gonna hear a little bit about what the public is actually saying about this from John Wright uh, shortly. So uh, we have to do something about <clears throat> um, creating a more efficient structure uh, and doing this in a way that is not simply suppressing expenditure, but actually uh, managing down and improving uh, the, the efficiency of care and improving it by focusing on building stronger accountability within our clinical and administrative communities to do a better job overall. Healthcare spending has actually more than doubled in real terms since that fix for a generation. And now we're looking to bend the cost curve again. Uh, and we have lots of ideas out there. The Council of the Federation are uh, struggling, struggling to put some ideas on the table and cooperate together. This is always a challenge in our, in our country. So how are we going to proceed going forward? Well, you're gonna hear uh, today, Maureen mentioned a, a number of our very talented speakers this morning, but you're also gonna hear from a variety of panels where we're gonna try to give you a lot of information very quickly and have an opportunity for some back and forth. We're gonna hear about innovative models of care and what we can do to uh, generalize these more broadly, what interferes with the spread. Andre Picard will be moderating a panel at the end of this morning on this. We're gonna talk a little bit about how new technologies come into our system, sometimes very passively, thousands of new technologies, and how do we actually manage the exit of technologies and procedures that have little benefit uh, and you're gonna hear from one of our extra fellows in particular there about how this is going on in one hospital. You're gonna hear a fantastic story from Shu Li about how patients and families have been brought in to transform the care and management of, of neonates as a kind of uh, following on Tom Lee's excellent suggestion about getting everybody engaged. You're gonna hear a little bit about 
clinical pathways and clinical leadership and how we can constructively mobilize clinical leadership to actually do a better job together in managing and responding to the call for uh, managing uh, towards optimal outcomes, efficiency, and, and uh, patient-centered focus. And you're going to hear at the end of the day a wrap-up on how one hospital, not so far from here, has done a very nice job of trying to essentially get themselves into a good footing by engaging uh, patients and a patient council and helping them at every step of the way to, to manage this turnaround and to uh, con continue to deepen their, their uh, improvement activities. At lunchtime, you'll also uh, join us for the, the awarding of this uh, Excellence Through Evidence Award, and that, that is a very exciting moment. And we'll have a bit of a reception at the end of the day. So that is our agenda in short. Uh, we'll have uh, time to exchange in each of the sessions, and we're going to try to, in particular, engage a number of patient representatives today, consistent with the theme of this meeting. But before uh, we proceed, I'd like to uh, just ask uh, Shelley McKay to come and join us and offer a few words as a patient representative. There are bios in your program, so I'm not going to go deeply on anybody's bio, but sh uh, uh, Shelley has been doing advocacy work for quite a long time. She's a former uh, national athlete and woman of distinction, and she's going to tell you a little bit about uh, her perspective as a patient representative. Shelley, please. <laughs> 